Hey there, it's Shauna. I hope you're doing great. Welcome to your weekly astrology forecast for October 23rd. So this week is all about daring greatly. And this week is titled after one of the books that's written by one of my favorite people, Brene Brown. So Brene Brown is a, sh a shame researcher and she's really figured out how when we're vulnerable and when we're empathetic, that actually allows for more human connection. It allows us to connect with each other more intimately. But in order to do this, we need to, as she says, we need to dare greatly. We need to dare greatly to be vulnerable and empathetic with the people in our lives. And so um, that topic is very important this week with the aspects that we have in the astrology. So. I'm excited to share the astrology with you, and then I have three tips for you to have an amazing week. So uh, the first thing that's happening earlier in the week is we have um, Mercury making an aspect with Neptune. And so this is important because Mercury is related to our thought process. It's how we communicate. It's how we make sense of things at an intellectual level. And then Neptune dissolves things. Neptune is um, about spiritualizing or washing things away. And so what this means is that there may be a new awareness that comes up around something. Um, there may be, uh, you may find yourself releasing an old thought pattern or letting go of um, an old thought process that wasn't, that you just don't need anymore. So, um, so that's happening earlier in the week. Again, it's a harmonious aspect, so I don't see it being like a struggle. It may just be like where you're like, oh, like I'm thinking about things differently now. And then the other part that's happening this week is we have the sun going into Scorpio. So it's officially Scorpio season. Happy birthday to all of my Scorpio people. And then the sun is going to conjunct Jupiter at, around, the, around this week as well. And so um, this is important because the sun acts as a big spotlight for wherever our focus is. You can think of it as like a big flashlight in a dark room. And so we're shining the flashlight on Scorpio issues, which is about power, it's about intimacy, it's about bonding, and it's about sharing our resources. So when the sun comes into contact with Jupiter, it magnifies and blows up all of these situations as well. So. Um, so that means this week you may find yourself um, really focused on your intimate partnerships, how it is that you use your power, your emotional, intellectual, and your spiritual power. Are you a good steward of your power? And um, do you allow for, um, for using your power that's in a healthy way or are there any areas where manipulation or um, power tripping or shame or guilt comes up? Anything like that. Um, so, and then the last part that's happening later in the week is we have Mercury and Venus making aspects to Pluto. So Mercury, we already know, is our mind, it's our thought process, it's uh, the thoughts that we think. And then Venus, in contrast, is about relationships. Venus tells us about our values. It tells us about how we socialize with each other, how we connect, and um, how the people and the things and the situations in our life reflect our values, what it is that, that we're drawn towards. Um, so what's interesting is that Venus, in particular, is making a square to Pluto. So square is about tension. It com it. Um, Asks that we confront a certain issue. And so in this case, the issue is Plutonic, it's Pluto. So Pluto is about transformation. It's about the birth, death, and rebirth process. Um, aspects to, to Pluto typically require that we let go of something and that that thing, whatever it is, in this case, it's probably, um, it's probably around how it is that we relate to each other, how it is that we socialize in some way. There's something here that needs to metaphorically die and so that there can be new growth. And so that doesn't mean that it needs to be like a bad thing. I would notice where it is that there's like an aspect of how it is that you relate to other people, especially around power dynamics. Is there something that isn't working for you anymore? And this may be like a practical example. Is it like, um, is there any kind of passive aggressiveness that's happening? Is there any kind of manipulation? Is there any kind of 
um, is there any way that you are not taking responsibility for your actions and relationships? Or are you taking all of the responsibility and then the, the other person or other people are not taking any responsibility and you're taking on everything? So those are all that's kind of like a full spectrum to look at. And, you know, depending on your nature, these may be very subtle things or they may be very overt. Um, also, if you're having a Pluto transit already, it may be something that's that's um, more present for you in this week. So I would just notice, again, um, the overarching theme for this week is around how it is that we connect with each other and how it is that we use our power. And um, a big part of this is being vulnerable and having empathy. So that leads me to um, the tips that I have for you this week. So tip number one is to follow your hunches. So this is really important because we have Mercury, which is the mind very active with Neptune and Pluto. And Neptune and Pluto connect us with our intuition. They connect us with our gut and, um, and these hunches that it's good to follow. So notice if you have a gut feeling about something and follow that, allow for that to happen. Um, that's really important this week. Uh, and then tip number two is to practice empathy and healthy boundaries. So what I mean by that is empathy is basically putting yourself in someone else's shoes. It's, um, it's setting aside your own perspective just for a moment and then thinking about how that other person, like how it's possible for someone else to have their own perspective based on their life history and what's happened to them and that kind of thing. Um, we can do that by looking at, for example, if someone is... Um, is committing domestic abuse or any kind of abuse, even emotional abuse. If that person has a history of abuse um, from childhood, we can empathize. We can say, oh, that's that person is doing that because of their upbringing. And we can, we can have empathy for why that person is doing that activity. That being said, the other part of this is to practice healthy boundaries. So just because we can empathize with someone that does not mean that the behavior is appropriate for you. So it may be okay, it may not be okay. You need to judge that for yourself. So that's why I think um, these two are so important is it's we need to have empathy in order to connect with one another, but we don't want to sacrifice our, our own um, health, our own state of well-being if the person is doing something that is not healthy for us. So. That's tip number two. Uh, before I give you tip number three, I have a quote that I want to read. So this is from another one of Brené Brown's books. Um, it's not from Daring Greatly, it's from I Thought It Was Just Me, um, but it isn't. Making the journey from what will people think to, am, to I am enough. Uh, so in this section, she's talking about um, this pattern that she saw emerging from a lot of the people that she had interviewed and how um, we have all of these different requirements um, and how a person navigates through that. So she says, here is how I summarize the pattern that emerged across the interviews. In order to get my real feelings about sex, my body, my physical health, or my mental and emotional health, I have to acknowledge the filter, all of the messages and expectations that block my way. When I'm so worried about what I'm supposed to be, who I'm supposed to be, and how I'm supposed to be, I can't figure out who I am and who I want to be. I must understand where these messages come from so I can address them and move on. I need to talk about it because so few people are willing to have honest conversations about sex and health. I have to build connections with people who I can reach out to I need to talk about my feelings and my needs so I don't cut myself off from these important parts of my life. I don't know what's normal. I just want to be my authentic self. So I totally got goosebumps when I was reading that. I love, um, I feel like this encapsulates so much of the work that Brene Brown does and then it encapsulates a lot of what may come up for us this week as well because um, 
that in the bigger picture of things, so we have Neptune and we have Pluto that are being activated this week. And Neptune dissolves things that connects us with the bigger picture of what's happening spiritually so that we can let go of all the surface bullshit that doesn't matter. And then Pluto, it does a similar thing, but in a different way. Pluto is like, okay, what's real here? And what, like, how can we connect with what is most true and most authentic and most vulnerable? And so, um, so that, that requires a lot of daring gratefully, daring greatly because it's really uncomfortable to be vulnerable, but it is what connects us. Uh, so that leads me to tip number three. I want you to leave a comment and let us know how is it that you dare greatly? How is it that you, um, allow for empathy and vulnerability and even healthy boundaries? Like, what does that look like for you? Um, I know for me, it's really important to um, to talk to someone about what it is that they're experiencing and to like check my judgments at the door as much as I can because oftentimes I don't know what that person's history is. Um, I don't know what they have experienced like even that day. And at the same time, if that person is doing something that makes me feel not good in my body, then I know that I need to um, to, to regulate my contact with them in some way. And it's not that they're a bad person. It's just that, um, if I don't feel good when I'm interacting with them, that means that there's something that, that isn't working there. And so it doesn't mean anything about them or about me. It's just setting a healthy boundary. So I'd love to hear from you on how that works for you, how you dare greatly. Um, so if you want to get deeper into these themes, you can listen to the podcast, the weekly podcast that I co-host with my astro friend Mel of Energetic Principles. It's called The Feminine Principle, Astrology for Authentic Living. And it's really cool. We do um, a very detailed, much more detailed than I can do in this video um, forecast for every single week. Um, and then if you want to inquire about astrological counseling with me, if you want to set up a session, the best way to get in touch with me on that is to email me for pricing. And yeah, and then I just, I love um, the feedback that I get from you all watching these videos. It's really sweet for me. So if you like this video, share it with a friend because I like to get these messages out to as many people as possible. So until next week, I'm sending you lots of love and wishing you an amazing week. And I will talk to you soon. Namaste.